In today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about separation anxiety, how you can recognize it, where it comes from, and why it's happening. Make sure to stick around till the end of the video because I'm gonna give you guys five tips on how to avoid it. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by and checking out this video. If you aren't subscribed yet, make sure you do and you hit that notification bell so you get notified when the next video comes out. To all my subscribers, thank you so, so much for all your support and your likes and your comments. I love waking up in the morning and seeing all the comments down below. Since I launched this channel with my first video before you buy a French Bulldog, this channel has seen rapid growth to almost a thousand subscribers and over 70,000 views on that video. So I just wanna say thank you to everyone for your love and your support on this channel and showing your interest, leaving comments. It means so much to me and it keeps me pushing forward to give you guys more content. Quick disclaimer guys, I am not a trainer and I'm not a behavioralist. Everything that I'm about to share with you guys are, is based on my own research and my own personal experience with growing up, up with dogs my whole life. What is separation anxiety? Well, in dogs, it's a feeling of being worried or nervousness or just the feeling of being uneasy. What are signs of anxiety in a dog? Well, typically they'll be very attached to their owners uh, they will be very destructive, typically at exit points. They'll show signs of uh, pacing, panting, trembling, and sometimes even vomiting. Okay, I had to put him down because once again, he was heavy. And actually, there was someone that made a comment last time, like, what do I curl, 10 pounds? Like, how am I not able to lift my 26 pound dog? I'm sorry, bro. I'm not doing this in one take. I'm doing this for like an hour. Why does this happen? So dogs are pack animals and they do a lot better in a setting where there's an established leader in the group, which is you, the owner, which is also why it's very important for you as the owner to establish your role as an alpha in your relationship with your dog from an early stage of their life. When you leave, your dog doesn't know when, where you're going or when you're gonna be back, so it ends up reacting. Now, in a situation like this, your dog has taken over the the role of being the leader of that pack so it's reacting because as a leader of the pack he is supposed to lead and he is supposed to protect so if you're not in the room and he can't see you he is not coping with that situation well because he cannot be around you to protect you and to be there for you so this is one of the reasons along with many others, uh, why dogs react the way they do with being destructive or pacing, panting, barking, just being very stressed out and showing these signs of anxiety. All right, so where does this separation anxiety come from? Well, it could come from the parents. If you have both mom and you have dad and both of them suffer from a high level of stress and anxiety, and separation anxiety, then chances are that their litter, their puppies from their litter are gonna suffer from it as well. Now, I would say that most of the time it is inflicted by the owners or the handlers. Yes, I mean you. You are the one that's responsible for this uh, separation anxiety, but don't worry, you've made it this far in the video. So I'm gonna give you five tips on how you could avoid or address that your dog has separation anxiety. Tip number one, Establish alpha and leadership with your dog from day one, whether it would be an older adult or a puppy. You want to establish that you are the alpha, you are the leader, and you are the one in charge. Number two, what you want to do is you want to condition your dog to know that it's okay for you to leave the house and to have some space from each other. And the best way to do that is to actually distance yourself from the dog, separate yourself, and you can do that by either putting them in another room or leaving the house for a short period of time. And then over time, you're gonna slowly increase the duration of how long you are actually separated from your, from your dog. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna help desensitize its reaction to, you know, you leaving. It's not gonna freak out because in his mind or her mind, she's gonna be like, Oh, okay. Yeah, she, she's just going to do groceries. She's going to work and, you know, she'll be back. And the dog's not going to react because 
it knows that you're going to be returning. Right, tip number three, you don't want to bring attention to the fact that you are leaving. So what I mean by that is that you don't want to, you know, before you shut the door being like, okay, Fluffy, I'm going to see you in a little bit. I'm just going to work or, you know, I'm just going grocery shopping. Be a good boy. Be a good girl. You don't need to do that because when you do that, your dog is going to be like anticipating you leaving. It's going to know that you're leaving for a long period of time. It's going to stress them out because they don't want to be separated from you. But if you end up just, you know, grabbing your, you know, your coat and your keys and you just go out the door and not make a big stink about it, then they are less likely to react to it because they know, you know, if this isn't a big event, like you're going to be coming back. It's no different than any other time when you went down the hall to grab your, your laundry or, you know, you had to go outside your car to bring in a case of water or whatever. Tip number four is to prepare your dog before you leave. Now you could do this through mental or physical stimulation and there's two ways of doing it. You could either have a training session with them or you could take them out for a long walk and just throw the ball around a little bit so they end up getting exhausted and tired. So when you're gone, they're gonna be sleeping. All right guys, tip number five, Last one is you could give them their favorite chew toy or something like a Kong with some peanut butter in it. And you could just give it to them just as you're about to leave out the door. Not only is this gonna keep them entertained, but it's gonna keep them stimulated and it's gonna keep them you know, preoccupied doing something else rather than paying attention to you as you're just about to leave out the door for the next couple of hours. All right guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of this video. Did it help you guys with your dog separation anxiety? Do you have more questions? What is it that you guys wanna see in the next video? All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Since I launched this, since I launched this, <laughs> I can't say it. I cannot say this line. Why can I not say this line? Since I launched, since I lost, why is it so difficult to say? Since I lost, bleh, damn, I keep screwing up. Why is this easier some days and harder than others? Food is down there. Chilling. I do the hard work around here. I don't know what he does. He just, he's just got a pretty face. He shows up in a couple of videos here and there. Everyone comments, oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. Yo. This logo looks wicked on screen. They did a good job. Woo! Feeling pretty fly. Woo. That was actually really good. Peter, you did good. You did good. Yeah.